Hey guys, welcome to this Thursday, April 23rd edition of Kitchen Table Chemistry. And today I'm going to try to get uh, you how to use Graham's Law. All right, Graham's Law has to do with diffusion. And diffusion is the movement or net movement of anything from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. And diffusion is driven by a concentration gradient. In other words, a difference in concentrations. Uh, if someone in the house is cooking, usually you'll smell it throughout the house, and that is a movement from high concentration in the kitchen to lower concentration wherever you are in the house. Uh, I think diffusion is something you've talked about in biology and probably something we understand. Effusion is a different word here. Effusion uh, is a physics and chemistry type term, and it's the process by which a gas is going to escape from an initial container uh, through a hole into a second or empty container. Uh, usually that second container being empty will be a vacuum, so it gives you more of a true speed of a gas rather than diffusion, which is usually movement through air. Uh, here's an example of diffusion. We've opened two containers. The one um, on my right is hydrochloric acid, HCl. Whenever we've opened up a, a, a container that is uh, concentrated like 12 molar, it does tend to smoke like that. Uh, here it's been deliberately opened next to a container of ammonium hydroxide and it's reacting or combining in the air as the hydrochloric acid diffuses from the container around the room. Um, usually try and limit stuff like this, which is why we have the fume hood. Okay, Graham's law of effusion looks like this. The rate of gas A over the rate of gas B is equal to the square root of the molecular mass of gas B over the molecular mass of gas A. So things to note there, we're talking about rates, which will usually be in the units of meters per second. And we're talking about molecular mass, which is grams per mole we've typically used. Uh, notice please here that this is B down here and B up there. So they are uh, opposite or reciprocal like that. So rate of A, over rate of B is equal to the square root of the molecular mass of B over the molecular mass of A. And I'll show you how to use this law. It is a bit different. And it's related to that whole kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. Graham's law of effusion when we're talking about time. Now this is time, so straight time. Time of A over time of B is equal to the molecular mass of A over the molecular mass of B. So there is no inverting them here. They just go straight across. So time is direct, not inverted. Uh, make sure you've got both of those copied down correctly on the back of your periodic table. You're going to uh, be using them both at some point in time here. And uh, don't confuse them. All right, it looks a little confusing. Man, that's a lot of square root type idea, but let's see how this actually works. Okay, how much faster is neon gas than argon gas at the same temperature and pressure? So we've got neon and we've got argon. And a trip, a, a quick trip to the uh, periodic table says the mass of neon, molecular mass of neon, uh, is going to be uh, 20.2 grams per mole. The molecular mass of argon is 40.0 grams per mole. Now, quick comprehension check here. The lighter gas always moves faster, always, always, always. So neon always has to move faster than argon because neon is lighter than argon. Okay, the rate of neon is what we're trying to figure out here, how much faster it is. So we're gonna set that to our X. And the rate of argon is we're gonna set it to one. And this is simply gonna be a comparison of the two rates because we wanna know how much faster neon is than argon. So now that I've got everything, I'm going to put the rate of neon over the rate of argon, and I'm gonna set that equal to the square root of the mass of argon over the mass of the neon here. And then I'm simply gonna put in my values uh, where I have um, X, which is the rate of neon, over one, which is the rate of argon, uh, is equal to the square root of the mass of argon, which is uh, 40.0 grams per mole, over the mass of argon, which is 20.2 grams per mole. 
And notice that these two units are going to cancel because we're dividing them by each other and there is no unit on this thing. We're literally just going to be able to say how much faster it is. So we solve for x and I got an x value here of 1.41. So what that means now is that um, neon, don't do that. Neon is 1.41 times faster. than argon. And that's what we can say in the end is how much faster is neon than argon. And that is one of the ways that we will be using and the most major way we'll be using Graham's law. Let's take a look at a second example here. This one is with time. Now, how long would it take air at 29 grams per mole to travel the same distance as helium uh, in five seconds. So this is times. We're talking about how long, and I'm just going to switch colors here because I feel like it. We've got helium's time. Now helium uh, is given 5.0 seconds here. That sound in the background is the cat. The time of air is what we'd like to find. So the molecular mass of helium is uh, 4.0 grams per mole, and the molecular mass of air is 29.0 grams per mole. There. And I think we all understand that helium moves pretty fast. At some point in time, you have uh, inhaled helium from a party balloon or something like that, or seen someone do it or it done it in my classroom and it makes your voice high and squeaky and the reason because of the reason it does this is because helium moves much much faster than air does because it moves faster it creates a higher pitched sound so our Graham's law here what we're going to do is time of air over the time of helium is equal to the square root of mass of air over the mass of helium. So now I'll input my values. Time of air is the x over time of helium, which is 5.0 seconds. And that will be set equal to the square root of here uh, of air, which is 29 grams per mole. And helium is 4.0 grams per mole. What will now happen is these units, again, will cancel each other out. And I get initially uh, the time of air, which is the x, equal to uh, 2.69. And it's still sitting over 5.0 seconds. So then I'll finish that out, and I end up with a time of air equal to 13.4 seconds. So what that means is that the distance that helium travels in five seconds, it will take air 13.4 seconds to travel the same distance. Why? Because air is heavier. And that's how uh, Graham's law works. I hope this uh, these two examples have helped. I've given you a few to work from here and um, it should work out okay. It usually does once you've seen some examples. Without examples, I think it's really, really tough. This would be something that I was not looking forward to teaching you. And that because it's easy when you see it, but it's really tough to describe. Hope you're doing great. Really do hope that. And uh, take care. We'll talk